Good morning. Uh, today I thought I'd show you a little bit about what it's like to live with diabetes. Um, it's pretty much like any other kind of way of life, but there's a few subtle differences. So here's the day starting off. It's um, stupid o'clock in the morning, and uh, this is my morning routine. Right. First of all, is uh, Get the kettle on, make the coffee. Mm. Right, whilst the coffee's brewing, <coughs> our uh, first job of the day is to sort the drugs out. Yeah. Now this is my little um, kit that I use. For Testing the blood sugar levels. Uh, quite a simple little process. Little sensitive strip, plugs in the machine, arm the lancet, stab finger, obtain a small drop of blood, put it on the machine, and wait four seconds. And then we get a reading, 6.2 this morning, which is okay, that's kind of within range. Anywhere between 5 and 7 is, uh, is not bad. Uh, what this is, is my, um, they call a fasting reading, because I haven't eaten for the last ooh, 11 hours, I guess, something like that. So uh, it gives me a good baseline reading of, of how I'm doing with controlling my blood sugar. Right, and then I have to... Decide how much insulin to take for the day. Uh, this depends upon how much exercise I'm going to be doing, essentially. The more exercise I do, the less insulin I'll need. And conversely, the less exercise, the more insulin. So it's, um, it's always a bit of a guess because work is never entirely predictable. So uh, I'm going to guess about that much today. Do this in a different part of the body each day so that <laughs> you don't get too sore in one place. Today is left arm. Right. Then I prepare my pills, which I keep in a little box, so that I don't forget if I've taken them or not, which can happen. So that's uh, two pills for the morning breakfast, two pills for the evening meal, and then a stack it the before bed. So that's it, that's my baby pill sorted. Okay, having sorted out my drugs for the day, uh, the next task is to sort out my breakfast, which today um, will be porridge, uh, made with soy milk and water. Okay, whilst the porridge is cooking, I'll start making my uh, sandwiches that I'm going to need to take to work with me, from my homemade loaf, which is uh, full of seeds and uh, stuff to try and uh, make it more slower digesting because uh, bread is not the uh, the greatest of foods for diabetics but it's very very convenient for making uh, snack food as we all know so here's breakfast which uh, is a large bowl of porridge as you see yeah, black coffee and pills um, huge amount of carbohydrate and, and calories there. The reason for that is um, I expect to be doing a pretty physical job for the rest of the day so I actually need a fair bit of uh, carbohydrate loading to, um, to cope with that. I'll show you later, hopefully. So here's my packed lunch for the day. Um, two sandwiches, 
and four pieces of fruit and a flask of coffee. Okay, it's uh, almost 10 o'clock. I've been putting up uh, seeding grid this morning, which uh, is not too heavy work, but it does involve stepping up and down off of this about 300 times an hour. So uh, I've burnt up the porridge and uh, it's time to go and eat some more food. I know it's time to eat because uh, not only do I feel a bit hungry, and my skin's starting to go cold and clammy and uh, generally uh, a few other signs that, uh, that let me know that uh, my blood sugar's getting low. So time to go. Right, now it's nearly one o'clock. Blood sugar going down low again. Time to eat. So I have my evening meal, which I have to try and avoid eating too much of, as I won't be doing much exercise after. As you can see, my day is much like anybody else's working day. But taking metformin and insulin means that I have to eat when I, my blood sugar gets low. There is no choice. If I don't, I risk having a hypoglycemic event, a hypo, which uh, could eventually, if I, you know, if I ignored it, would lead me to go unconscious and that's uh, not a good option. The day I have shown you, my blood sugar control was pretty good. Not every day is like that. Some days it goes pretty haywire and you know, when I'm out of my routine, things can be quite difficult. Uh, but the motivation for keep on trying and keep on the case with the uh, blood sugar control is if I don't, is the blood sugar levels go up and up and up and I start risking long-term damage to my body as well as feeling quite poop, you know, at the time. This long-term damage can be heart attacks, strokes, limb loss, blindness, you name it, you know. Essentially all this stuff adds up to accelerated decrepitude. You just get very old very quick if you don't keep on top of it. The motivation for being on top of the blood sugar control and, you know, keeping the diet and the exercise right is really a no-brainer, you know. If you don't do it, it's just gonna, you're gonna feel sick and, and it's gonna hurt, so there is much motivation to keep doing it right. It would be easy to view this life as restrictive or, you know, some diabetics even get a bit depressed about it, you know, having to keep the diet together all the time and keep on top of it. Uh, but the way I view it is I'm really lucky to live in such a time that I am, and such a place that I get this treatment that c keeps me healthy. And uh, I get this for free, by the way, from good old NHS, thank you very much. Up until the 1920s, this disease was inevitably fatal. There are many people in many parts of the world where they don't have access to the drugs or they don't, can't get a decent diet and, or they can't afford it. And uh, these people are dying early and quite nasty deaths sometimes. So uh, in that respect, I feel very, very lucky to be here and now. You know, I carry on with my life. I do pretty much all the things I want to do. The diabetes is not an issue. I can usually work around it. So I intend to keep on living this nice life that I've got. And, you know, all I have to do is eat properly, do the exercise, which is, after all, what we should all be doing, diabetic or not, isn't it? So uh, I hope I'm giving you some sort of small insight into what it's like to be a diabetic.